Welcome back to the Urban Farmyard where this city girl goes country. During the lockdown I have successfully decluttered my entire house. Every nook, every cranny, every cupboard, every drawer, every item has been taken out and sorted. Today I'm going to share the things that I have learnt along the way to help you with your own decluttering project. sitting here with a glass of wine today, a celebratory glass of bubbles, for two reasons. One, it is the last official day of lockdown here in New Zealand, and two, I have officially finished my decluttering project, but I've got a lot of things that I wanted to share with you about the decluttering process. Now there's a big caveat here, I have decluttered the entire house, but if you set foot in my house right now, it still doesn't look immaculate at all, and there's a really good reason for that. I discovered along the way that decluttering actually comes in several stages. There's decluttering, there's organising, there's cleaning and then there's styling. What I've done is I have done all the decluttering and most of the organising. What I haven't yet done is go through and give everything a really good clean and I also haven't started styling the house. So you will find that it actually looks quite average when you walk in here but those things I'm going to tackle next. Now when it comes to cleaning I have done some cleaning. As I've taken things out and decluttered and put them back in a more orderly state, I absolutely have cleaned those surfaces, so those cupboards and drawers and things like that. But the rest of the house is still looking a bit like a dog's breakfast. That's one thing I've learnt. Decluttering is a really big project. It takes a lot of time and I found that the house ends up going into absolute disarray as you're going through the process. So that's something you need to be mindful of. I found that while I was decluttering one space and that one space looked immaculate, other areas of the house were going to ruin, partly because I was moving things around the house as I went. So for example, if I found things in the bedroom that didn't belong in the bedroom, I would decluster clutter them out of the bedroom and pop them in the area of the house that they belonged in and wait until I was tackling that other area of the house before doing anything with them. So that meant a lot of things were being moved around and not actually dealt with at the time. I also found it was really difficult to keep up with cleaning at the same time as decluttering the entire house. There's only so many hours in the day and while I have had a lot of time at my disposal because we've been on lockdown, in reality my motivation doesn't last all day. I've had to tackle things in little bites and my motivation to clean after spending a whole lot of time decluttering just wasn't there. So I decided to let cleaning go for a while and that will be the thing that I start next now that the core decluttering has actually been finished. One of the other things I learned along the way is you really need to declutter in tiny little bite-sized chunks. So if you have been following my decluttering series you will see that I have broken things down into really little projects. Some of the bigger projects were things like decluttering the kitchen pantry. That was a big project all done on one day. But other days I did things like just doing the hanging area of the wardrobe or just doing the drawers in a bedroom. Break it down into little tasks so that you feel a sense of accomplishment feel that you're getting somewhere but aren't becoming completely overwhelmed by the enormity of having to do everything at once. Now that's probably a little bit different to the KonMari system where she does work in quite big chunks quite quickly. She will corral everything from all over the house into one space so that you can see this massive pile of clothes for example and deal with all the clothing that you've got. I used elements of the KonMari system but I tended more to work from room to room and space to space rather than working in categories. By all means you can totally work in categories but I know from having done that previously I got to a point that it felt a little bit overwhelming and I was frustrated because I wasn't seeing completely clear spaces that had been entirely finished and by working from room to room I did get that sense that I was actually achieving something because the room would go from absolute chaos to lovely and clean and clear. Maybe not so clean, but definitely clear. 
Something else which worked really well for me is as much as possible I organised by category within each room. Now that sounds a bit like an oxymoron because I had said that I didn't use the KonMari method of organising by category. That's not strictly true. What I did is I did focus on each room or each space and what I did as I was organising is I corralled each thing from that room into categories so I could see how many things I had from each category within that room and decide what was going to go and what was going to stay. Now that's KonMari yes but where it differs is KonMari would gather everything from one category from the entire house and bring it into one place. I didn't grab everything from the entire house, I just worked on categories room by room. Something else I learnt is don't go ahead and buy a whole lot of organising things before you get started. I know most people are inclined to start new projects by going shopping and this time around I wasn't able to do that because everything was on lockdown and that was actually really helpful. The reason why I don't recommend buying more organising things before you start is it's very difficult to determine exactly what you need, what shape, what size, what quantity, until you've gone through and decided what you're keeping. By decluttering first and then organising into containers second, it enabled me to purge as much as possible. It then enabled me to go through and measure the space that I had available and then write a list of what I needed to corral the things that were going back into that space into nice and tidy containers. Now I must admit that part way through the decluttering process I did do a big container order and it was a bit of a mistake. What I did is I went through and measured the areas that I was about to start organising. I tetris all these containers into perfect little arrangements within that space and then I had the containers sent here before I started organising. What that's ultimately meant is yep I had containers that were perfectly designed to fit that space but I actually ordered a lot of containers that I don't need because I didn't have as many things going back into that space as what I'd planned. So that means that I now need to go through the process of finding the receipt, driving to town, exchanging everything and basically it's made things a little bit more complicated than what it needed to be. Something else I learned is once I'd finished decluttering a space and started to organise it is you need to think really carefully about how you use that space and you need to start to use vertical space as well as horizontal space. Now that was really key particularly in the kitchen where I had an older style closet pantry which had really deep shelves, really tall shelves and it was a space that was really poorly utilised until I started decluttering and reorganising it. If you go through and have a look at my pantry organisation video you will see that I bought containers specifically designed to use vertical space to make sure that I could pull everything through to the front of each shelf and use the vertical space to make sure that I could see absolutely everything that was going back into the pantry. I've done the same thing in drawers and other closets as I've gone through the house. So where does the house now stand? Well I have completely decluttered but there are a couple of areas that I have not yet tackled. I decided to leave the outdoor spaces, the car and the garage to another day so I have not yet done those spaces. We have tidied the garage, I have removed a lot of stuff from that space but it is far from complete. The car I also haven't tackled yet so that's on my list of things to do very soon because I soon need to empty the car completely so that I can get lots of cat cages in it to have a whole lot of cats and kittens desexed. The veranda outside the house also needs to be tackled. At the moment I have popped lots of things that belong outside on the veranda but I actually need to go through and sort that space out separately. I have organised most of the areas that I've decluttered. I found it was actually reasonably straightforward to declutter and then organise things back into drawers and cupboards and shelves and things like that. But I found that there are a couple of problem areas and one of those problem areas is the closet in our spare bedroom. We have reconfigured that space to some extent but I've found that when I've started putting things away in that newly reconfigured space that I'm still missing some key storage. So I need to go through and figure out the best way to store things in that space and with us coming out of lockdown now it's a good time to start to do that because I again have access to stores which I haven't had through the decluttering process. 
I also need to go through and completely clean this house. Now I've cleaned inside cabinets, inside drawers, inside shelves, basically I've done sort of the interior cleaning. I have also cleaned the master bedroom and the ensuite, but the other areas of the house need a really good scrub. So you will have some cleaning videos to look forward to very soon. Once the cleaning's done, I'm then going to go through and do the fun part, which is styling. So what I've found is I do still have some piles of things around the house, predominantly artwork that needs to go on the walls, which I have held off hanging up until I get to the styling stage. The other thing I need to do is I now need to get rid of everything that I have decluttered. So as I've gone through the process, I've basically made two piles. There's one giant trash pile which needs to go to the city dump now that the dump is open again. So I'm really excited to get rid of that. The other is a pile of things which are in really good condition which can be donated. And so I'm going to start donating those things either to local families in need or to our local op shop now that everything is opening up again. So there's quite a bit of work involved in that, but what it means is I will then have a nice clear space where I've been storing all of those things through the decluttering process. What probably would have been better is if we hadn't been in lockdown, I actually think I probably would have donated those things on a weekly or a daily basis as I was going through the declutter itself, but that simply hasn't been an option during lockdown. So if you haven't followed my decluttering journey, go through and check the link below. There's an entire series as I work from space to space, room to room, and declutter and organize absolutely everything in this house. Hopefully it will give you the inspiration and the motivation to go through and do the same in your house. It really has lifted my mood having a much clearer space than what I started with. Take care out there and I will see you back here tomorrow.